Hello everybody, Dr. Carmen Bryant, Psychological Health Consultants and Services and Redefining Yourself, a program that was developed for women who are in domestic violence, coming out of domestic violence, or uh, contemplating leaving, needing more information, or recovering from domestic violence, specifically narcissist abuse. Uh, today I decided to change scenery a little bit. You're accustomed to seeing me sit in front of my computer, even though you don't see the computer. The computer's usually right behind the camera, uh, so I can see it. So today I decided to bring my iPad and sit in one of my uh, private office, kind of change the kind of the, the lighting and um, where I sit so hopefully this is okay with you guys and so today I just wanted to come in first of all do know that uh, domestic violence uh, especially uh, narcissist abuse is not just a female uh, issue you know this is not just a problem that females experiences but there are many men that have been in narcissistic relationships um, there is a um, gentleman on YouTube as associate direct uh, and this gentleman he um, mr. holiday I think his name is um, he has been through uh, first-hand experience uh, in a narcissistic relationship with a woman uh, with a with a female with a, a partner um, you can watch his videos as well and he gives it from a male perspective um, I like following Miss Angie Atkinson she is a um, YouTube and a, uh, a life coach and she also is um, uh, well versed in narcissists I myself am a licensed mental health uh, clinician uh, I also am a certified clinical trauma professional and a certified life coach uh, so I created this program you know first of all because I'm bringing information from a mental health standpoint a clinician standpoint um, I am not a psychologist I hold a doctor's degree um, in psychology counseling psychology on the educator level so I, I have a, a doctor of education in um, psychology counseling psychology with an emphasis in counselor education and supervision so I am also a clinical uh, supervisor in the state of Washington and so I bring information to you based on my experience in a clinical setting um, dealing with women who um, have experienced are experiencing domestic violence but narcissist abuse and I also come from the perspective of um, a survivor um, having to understand you know the process uh, that I went through and to understand what was going on and putting words to it uh, when you are in um, the uh, graduate level, the master's level, as you know, for those of you that are pursuing your uh, degrees in whether it's counseling, psychology, or marriage and family therapy, my emphasis is marriage and family therapy, though I went the route of becoming a licensed mental health counselor. I kind of like that better, but I have the um, uh, the foundation of the marriage and family, the dynamics. Uh, but um, when you're on that level, you learn the whole concept of uh, counseling, intake, assessments, diagnosis, even the DSM that we use uh, when you look into narcissist uh, narcissistic personality disorder it gives you all the information but a lot of times you know for us having to do a practicum or going into one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling then you actually get to see these characteristics of different um, mental health disorders play itself out so you know what it looks like and the longer you work in the field the longer you have more exposure to different mental health disorders um, and when I became interested I've always been interested in being an advocate for um, women that were in domestic violence and I was the greatest advocate for many women and and I you know I I did what I could to protect them I did what I can I mean what I could and still do um, what I could to um, give them information and build their confidence um, yet at the same time I was going through some similar situations and they never knew about it you know when I decided to come out of the situation myself and begin recovery I also begin to study about this uh, particular uh, phenomena <laughs> phenomenon um, which is a personality disorder and if you've been watching my YouTube videos uh, or you're on my professional Facebook page you'll see that uh, you know in order to heal from um, you know a domestic violence relationship or to heal from a trauma like this it takes time and it's a process and so today I wanted to come in and I wanted to talk about the stages of grief um, I did uh, talk to some women um, recently and ask about different topics you know there were some topics that came up about marital rape um, came up about you know uh, well the healing process this process you know many women don't know what to expect if you never have 
had a baby, you don't know what to expect until you go to classes and learn about it. So at least you're not surprised when you start going through the process, though it's a very painful process. But you know, once you've become pregnant and you're going through the process of pregnancy, you will go through the process of delivering that baby. You know, and when you are in the delivery room, there's no way that you can change your mind like I did when I was a teenager. Uh, but you can't change your mind and decide in the middle of labor that I no longer want to have a baby. It's too late, you're already going through the process. And you know, when you get to the point in your life where you make a decision to leave an abusive relationship, you have to be prepared for the emotional uh, process that you're going to go through. The emotional process and the pain that's associated with, you know, detaching yourself from someone that you loved, but that didn't love you appropriately or did not really have no empathy, period, you know, to have your world shattered at what you uh, thought uh, and then the reality of what it was, what it, what it was. Uh, you know, there is a, you know, the pain of, of, of the emotional process and even the pain of the emotional healing process. Um, you know, during the time that you're breaking up with someone, it's not time to jump back into another relationship. That's like a drug addict, you know, or that's how addictions start. You jump out of one relationship that's painful, you jump into another one, you're taking all your baggage. And I always say Louis Vuitton, Coach, and Nike don't match. You know, that baggage doesn't match. You, you look a mess. You know, but you can't jump into another relationship because the person that you're jumping in a relationship with, anything they do is going to trigger you. And nine times out of ten, if you're coming out of a narcissistic relationship and you have not taken the time to heal and learn about it, you're going to jump right back into another narcissistic relationship. You have become a target. And that's another topic, you know, to talk about how do, nar how do you attract narcissists? How are a narcissist attracted to you? What is it about you that draws narcissists to you? And remember, you can't make the comment, you know, every man that I meet is the same. No, you are the common denominator in the situation. You are still the same. You haven't changed. That's why you keep drawing the same type of people. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, so today I just want to talk about the stages of grief. You know, what are some of the things to expect, um, you know, uh, when you go through a discard? Discard meaning that they have either the narcissist has found another supply because they have depleted you, whether it's financially, emotionally, you know, um, or uh, they have found another supply, or you have made a decision that you are going to leave the decision and it's, uh, you know, best for your health, your mental health, and for your children and safety. Um, now, do remember this, you know, to start from the beginning. Do you remember this? If you discard the narcissist and the narcissist has not time to lock, had not had time to lock in a good source of supply, you're going to, it's like poking the bear, you're going to uh, cause that narcissist to go into a narcissistic rage. It's almost like they're losing oxygen because they, you pull the rug out from under their feet. So they are now unstable because they have not locked in another supply. They're never going to be by themselves. So the one thing you have to remember is that whether you break out with them or they break out with you, they're going to find another supply. They have to replace the host. And when you take the parasite off, they have to find another host to, to clamp onto, you know. And sometimes if it's done in an emergency where you leave and they're trying to find something, sometimes the source of supply that they attach to is not um, a source of supply that they were probably thinking of or wanting to attach to because they were still, you know, it's almost like, jumping from block to block or, or stone to stone in water. They're trying to find, you know, something to attach itself to. Sometimes they were working on the new supply because they can almost sense the fact that you were about to leave. And um, so be prepared, you know, that you'll get some backlash. You'll be a smear campaign. They're going to talk about you. Remember, they've already created a picture in their, uh, in, in their friends' and family's mind of what type of individual you are. Uh, so be prepared. That's one thing emotionally you have to be get prepared for. Either it's going to be disclosed that he had, he had been, you know, and women alike, uh, but that he had been with someone all along, and he's going to make sure that you know and that you see. So he's going to try to get back at you and try to hurt your, uh, you know, hurt your emotions any way possible. Anything that you've ever told him in secret, he's going to use that against you and try to hurt you. And he's going to make sure that you see that he has another supply and leaving him didn't do anything. Yes, it did because he's still a mess and he still is enraged and he still is unstable and he's getting ready to spew his poison onto the new source of supply but he's got to groom the new source of supply so he can't show them everything that they did to you because the source of supply won't stay and they're desperate to hold on to that source of supply so they'll do everything that you complain about they'll make it look like this beautiful paradise and the next thing is is get off of all their social medias get them off your Facebook get them off of your Pinterest, whatever you're connected to social media. Do not stalk him on social media. Do not go and look and see what he's doing to see whether he lied. You have to cut it off. 
that is very complicated for a lot of women because remember you have this intense emotional pain that you're going through that you have to cut that person off um, from all social media now this is for those of you that do not have children by uh, the narcissist you know when you have children by a narcissist it becomes a little more complicated you know now you're gonna have to use the wisdom of uh, the the legal system the lawyer that you're working with and your conversations between you and the narcissist should only be on the children because they'll try to take that and they want information about you and in order to keep their foot in the door they all use terms like co-parenting and and you know they're not co-parenting with you they still want to um, control you so they'll take it upon themselves to tell you what needs to be done in the house how this needs to what time their bedtime is how they need to this is what they need to do this is this you know so they're really they're not co-parenting with you because co-parenting deals with the child and the child itself has nothing to do with your household and then if they're paying child support be prepared because they will try to uh, dictate how you need to spend that child support now true enough we know that there's some women that have total disregard for their children I get it I know that and they do not use the money for what they need to use for and that's to take care of the kids I get that part but I'm talking about the average you know normal woman that's taking care of her children that's coming out of an abusive situation that needs help and stabilizing he does not have the right to dictate how you use that money to support your children nor does he have the right uh, he has lost that right to tell you to do anything in your home he does not have the right to dictate uh, what you do in the home what time the you know of course you need to keep a healthy balance the children need to be in a bed at a certain time you make sure you feed them you know but they don't have the right to tell you how this needs to be done as if they're still in your home cut them off you know talk to your lawyer talk to a victim's advocate to know the boundaries to know you know because you are coming out of a situation where you don't know boundaries you, you you don't even know yourself you know so that's number two three whatever number I just gave you the next thing is do you know that either if you've decided to leave the, the relationship um, remember you have a habit of explaining yourself and defending yourself if you've made the choice that you finally need to leave the relationship be prepared that the uh, narcissist because that is a narcissistic injury you have attacked their ego uh, it makes them look bad that someone has discarded them or broke up with them they always have to look like the superior person and the lover of the universe you know or whatever they you know the facade that they're living in just be prepared that they will turn the story around to make it seem as if they're the ones that finally decided they need to let you go or they made a decision because you're crazy you're you're a poor you're a bad mother whatever the story is they're gonna make sure that it looks good on their part and they're the ones that discarded you try to avoid at all possibilities do not argue and try to defend yourself let them come up with whatever story they want to now if they decided to leave and they attach to someone else you know I know that's painful to be betrayed they've been betraying you all along I know it's very painful to be betrayed but take it as a blessing in disguise because most of us are pretty loyalist you know loyal loyal women and and we'll stick it out we'll we'll try to make it happen you know we'll endure we're uh, persevere you know and sometimes it takes someone walking away for us to finally you know end the relationship so if they have privileged you and honored you with walking away let them walk and you walk as fast as you can uh, like I said you know they're you know children not children uh, and it's about safety you know so next let me explain to you that most people are not prepared remember the trauma bonds go back and watch the uh, video about the trauma bonds um, because they're very 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 powerful uh, 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 dynamics in when it comes to staying in a uh, violent relationship um, but do know that there is a process of emotional grief that you will go through uh, now uh, there is a lady by the name of I think it was Kubler-Raw it was the Kubler-Raw stages of grief and it was on my computer so I, I did pull it up on my iPad but it's the Kubler raw stages of grief and there's seven, seven stages of grief model um, remember that when you're talking about grief and loss you know and many people do go to counseling for grief and loss grief and loss is loss is not just necessarily when someone dies you know the difference when a person dies you know the person is long, no longer there for you to see you can't see them they're gone uh, but when you're talking about the grief and loss of a relationship 
hopes and dreams and and the lies that this person has told that you held on to you know the hardest part is the fact that the person is still alive and you, they're still you know tangible um, and if you're watching on there that the, you'll cause yourself more pain trying to stalk them on Facebook or on social media to see what they're doing because they know that you're looking and so they will create another facade to make that other relationship look like the perfect relationship that you always desired restaurants you always wanted to go to vacations that they always wanted to go to and you know you see the couple hugging and kissing you know that's not how that person was with you and if you've been with that person long enough you know that that's just a facade that's gonna it's gonna fizzle itself out and eventually they're gonna go right back to their old routine the longer you've been with a person a lot of times the longer it takes to recover you know the longer you've been emotionally invested especially in these trauma bonds and these and 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 you know the domestic violence the longer it is sometimes to recover from the process your thoughts should not be trying to find another man to get with or another woman to get with gentlemen um, but your process should be in healing. When you have major surgery, you don't, you know, if you had an amputation or if you had major surgery, you know, you don't go out and play football the next day. You know, women, when you give birth to a child, as soon as you, you know, the, the doctor pulls the baby out, you don't get up from the, from the bed and decide that you're going to go swimming or you're going to go for a jog, a light jog, so you can get yourself in shape. It's a healing process to go with it. You know, and then once you're in, you know, when you're in full labor, you can't change your mind that, that you don't want to have a baby anymore. So do know that grief and loss is not just when you lose a loved one to death, but is also uh, the loss of a relationship. And these are the stages that you may go to go through. Now, remember, you're not, you know, most people do not go through all of the stages. Some of them do not go through all of the stages in order. Some people jump back and forth between the stages. And don't let anyone tell you that if you're still grieving within, the, within a year, then it's absolutely normal need to go seek help no to each and every person they grieve differently but it is healthy for you to go through each um each whatever one you identify that you are in to go through each one and feel each emotion don't pacify it with alcohol or drugs don't pacify it with another man you know don't pacify it with an addiction gambling or shopping you know um, yes you have to find healthy outlets to take care of yourself because you're changing the way that you've lived but we're gonna get to that you know so you know don't go seek uh, something to pacify the pain that you're gonna go through because you are going to go through pain it is a process I'm not gonna get here and tell you that it's not a process and it is a painful process for some of you um, so one of the stages so i'm going to go one through seven but keep in mind you're not going to go some people don't go through all of the stages some people do not go through all of the stages in order either you know so you have shock or disbelief so the shock or disbelief and you can find this on stages of grief recovery.com uh, so shock or belief and this is what I use in session as well. I use this with my clients that come in for different reasons for uh, grief and loss. And a lot of times when it comes to relationships and breakups, I use this same model to find out where they are so they can see where they are. A lot of times people feel like this is a, a not natural, something's wrong with me. Very, very natural and very, very common for those um, that experience the loss of a relationship, especially a breakup. And then think about how horrible this breakup has been or how horrible the relationship has been in the first place. And so you go through shock or disbelief and this can be can be the first reaction to news that a loved one has passed okay so we're not talking about a news of a loved one has passed but this could be the first reaction to the fact that this person decided that they're going to leave remember um, narcissists are also cowards sometimes they don't tell you that they're going to leave they just leave and and they like to leave open doors they do not like closure they always will leave open doors for some people that are getting out of these narcissist relationships the problem that many women run into is that you want closure the one thing you're gonna have to accept that there's a possibility you will never have closure and the closure that you will get is the closure that you um, provide for yourself because you'll never get close they don't like closure they always like open doors so you're gonna have to find your own closure and the biggest closure is forgiveness forgiveness does not mean that you have to forget what this individual has done nor cultivate a relationship with them because they'll keep doing the same thing over and over again they're predators you know but you're gonna have to forgive yourself and you're gonna have to forgive them and move on doesn't mean that you'll ever have a relationship with this person again but for your sense of being for your recovery and for your mental health and security and you know to live a wonderful life you have to forgive forgiveness will will make you get sick they will make you sick in your body you know there are people that come in they're so angry and they have not forgiven because if I forgive that means that I'm saying that it's okay it's not saying that it's okay it just means that you know I forgive you you were ignorant 
you know, I forgive your ignorance and I forgive you, but I don't have anything else to do with you and I'm going to move on with my life. The best revenge is to forgive. I can't say forget because you don't want to forget. That's amnesia. But to, to forgive and move on with your life. Don't do it in order to pay them back and show them, look what I'm doing, look what I'm doing. That means you haven't had closure for yourself yet. But the shock and disbelief. So uh, many people report numbness uh, where they don't feel anything for a few moments, for a few days. You know, when you realize that this person has left or you now see them, sometimes the closure comes when you see them with someone else and you didn't know that they were with someone else. Um, you know, um, and, and the numbness that goes along with it is disbelief. It's, it's like your whole world stood still and you're in a bubble or like you lost oxygen, you can't breathe. You know, you're walking around, nothing, everything is, you're looking out the window, you're wondering why people are laughing and smiling and how can you, you know, so, you know different different emotions that present themselves with um, shock and disbelief um, this experience can be surprising to many individuals because um, they may not immediately sense the devastating feelings that they will expect to feel in such news uh, so sometimes it's like your body goes into shock to protect yourself you know and so like okay why am I not feeling anything because it hasn't set in yet uh, denial uh, doesn't so much occur in grieving process when mourning uh, when the mourner forgets that their loved one has passed away, denial is related to how one expresses their emotions surrounding the grief. For example, a person who continuously say, I'm fine, I'm fine, uh, after a significant loss is deny is likely denying his or her feelings. Uh, it may also be true that the bereaved person does not know how to share their feelings with those closest to them. Um, you know, a lot of people around you and people be sensitive to people that have been through an abusive relationship and you knew and they didn't realize, you know, but sometimes, you know, that person doesn't know how to express himself because all they're waiting for you to say is we should have left him a long time ago because he was doing this and that and this and this. That's not the time for you to do that. That's the wrong time for you to interject your personal thoughts because they're not prepared to hear that. You know, they're dealing with a broken heart and so sometimes they don't know what to say you know on on one hand like I know I needed to leave or he needed to leave on the other hand I don't know I feel embarrassed or I'm ashamed to express it I really love this person even though I know this person was hurting me and my children um, anger uh, so a lot of times you may hear I'm fine I'm fine but you can tell that they're they're they, they're not sure how do you know I'm okay I'm okay don't worry about me I'm good I'm good you know anger um, let's see while not unusual to experience anger, many other feelings are significant loss. It is, it is not required. Some people become angry at themselves or at another person who left them. Think about it. The anger of the betrayal, the anger that you may have spent all these years, wasted all this time with this individual, you know, in hopes that you would have a relationship. You spent all this time with an individual uh, um, and given all your life and your soul, your time and your youth, your energy and your health, in this relationship and hopes you know for 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 really unrealistic hopes but you've given all this you have the right to be angry you know just don't do anything crazy in your anger don't go try to kill him you know don't try to kill yourself don't try to damage his property don't try to damage your property but you have the right to be angry you have been betrayed you have been hurt there's nothing wrong with anger feel the emotion be angry journal you know, if you pray, pray, you know, in your journal, talk about, you know, this is why I'm angry. I can't believe this person has done this. And, and then even to be angry at yourself for choosing a person like this, and you may have had the red flags and you didn't listen to the red flags, you know, so anger, it's okay to be angry, feel the emotion. It's okay to be angry. Find a professional, a coach, a mentor, a counselor, uh, you know, a friend that's willing to go through this with you, you know, to roll through the mud with you and feel the anger. You know, some people are not going to be able to handle you talking about it over and over and over again. But, you know, for those of you that are support systems, you know, they have to get it out. They have to, you know, I'm angry, I'm angry. And that may take a while. The anger may be kind of long be angry for a long time it's the women that are angry and never let go of that anger that become bitter women bitter angry hateful women that just hate all men and compare all men to this one individual that has hurt them so deeply you know it's not all men but you have to get beyond that anger you have the right to be angry but don't let that anger consume you where you become bitter and and you know hateful and people don't want to be around you and everything that you have to say you know is, is something hateful toward man men and mankind you know um yes you're angry get it you're angry. Your dreams have been destroyed. You have betrayed me. You've wasted my time and my youth. You've wasted my money. You know, uh, what about bargaining? Uh, trying to make a deal often with God. 
to change the situation. Um, let's see. Elizabeth Kubler Ross noted bargaining in her observation of individuals denying uh, dying from terminal illness. Uh, bargaining may not be so frequent when a loved one has died, but is also present in other losses such as divorce breakup, job loss, home loss, or other transition, where there is some hope the situation could be changed by an all-powerful God. This is her words. Uh, so bargaining, you know, uh, you get to a point where, you know, you may bargain, you know, um, you know, please bring them back. You know, maybe we can work this out. I'm not ready to go through this pain. You know, maybe it was better for me just to stay, you know, but bargaining. Be prepared. That may be an emotion that you may go through. Uh, waiting it out. Waiting for him to call you. You're looking at the phone. You're waiting for him to call. You wait, you're waiting for some regular routines. You know, they, they may have some... Um, uh, uh, you're accustomed to certain routines, so now you're bargaining. If I could only hear his voice again, I, girl, you don't want to hear his voice. That's what you're trying to get away from. And I know it sounds harsh, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you can talk like that. Uh, guilt. Guilt can occur when the bereaved regrets. Um, let's see. Let me go back. Guilt can occur when the bereaved have regrets about things they did or said before the loved one died. Okay, we're not talking about the die, but the breakup. Uh, they wish they can turn back the clock and do some things differently. Um, this is also guilt, you know, guilt in, first of all, not choosing the person that you chose and not having the people around you be hurt, you know, as deeply as they've been hurt, you know, because this affects everyone. But even the guilt of maybe if I would have done this or maybe if I see the, the narcissist banking that, you're, they're, that you will thrive off of the guilt and begin pursuing them you know because it, it, it is that grandiosity that that ego you know but they're hoping that you have enough guilt where you don't see anything that they did wrong you turn it all on yourself maybe if I would have been a better wife or a better mother or maybe if I would have not argued with him or maybe if I would have just you know had let him have this way but not this way you know maybe maybe get beyond that guilt it was never your fault you know it was never your fault you know, you were being abused, you were being manipulated, you were being gaslighted, um, you, trauma bonds were occurring. You know, you have to get beyond that, but do know that those are feelings that could come up. Um, depression, you know, oftentimes uh, described to profound sadness that is natural human reaction to grief or loss. The symptoms of grief are very similar to those of clinical depression. You know, why would you be happy? You're devastated, you're hurt, you know. Um, so yeah, you, you may go through bouts of depression, you know, but the depression is going to change. You know, uh, some days you're going to have good days. Some days you're going to have bad days. You know, and for those of you that experienced the loss of a loved one, you know, some days you think about them. Some days, you know, you'll be all right. You encourage yourself, you know. Let's see acceptance and hope. In the last stages of the seven stages of grief, one arrives at the belief that although life will never be the same again after the loss, there's hope that life will go on. Life will go on. You know, you've got accustomed to uh, a routine with your abuser. There were certain things that you were accustomed for them doing, to being there, and now you're having to fill your life. It's a void, and, and you're having to recreate, redefine yourself. What do you like? Where do you like to eat? What colors do I like? You know, um, what what did I do before they came? You know, this is a routine that we used to have. Now my house is empty. I'm the only one sitting at the table. You know, um, you have to now find new routines. You have to self-care. Take yourself out to eat. Get a massage. Get your hair done. Get your nails done. Get your feet done. You know, but you have to recreate a new you. You have to create new routines. You know, yes, the, the process can be, the pain can be excruciating, ladies. Most ladies try to avoid that. But the, the drama and the pain that you were experiencing with a person that could care less about you, that play with your emotions, that hurt you so deeply, what do you want to go through? You know, a lot of women stay because they don't want to go through the emotional process. And some have made up their mind, I'll just go through this emotional process and I'm not looking back. You have to be prepared that there is a deep pain and an excruciating pain that you may go through. Some of you may not, you know, some of you may go through pain, but not excruciating. And remember, the longer the relationship lasted, sometimes the deeper the pain, the deeper the wound, you know, and especially if you had abusive relationship prior to the one that you got into, the deeper the pain, the longer the relationship, the deeper the wound, the, the deeper the pain, the more people it has affected. If your children have been affected, you know, you'll go through the process of, I can't believe I wasted my time with this individual. All these years have been lost. Trust me. Go through the process. Go through the process of pain. Go through and feel the pain. You know, even if you talk, don't talk to, pain, talk to people, just anybody about the pain. Go to a good counselor. 
and sit down and talk about this so they can walk you through this grief process, walk you through the pain. Because what you're feeling, believe it or not, is very normal. And sometimes we can't figure out, you can't breathe, I can't eat, I can't sleep at night, I toss and turn on, I can't sleep. I think about this individual all the time. The, the worst part is you go on social media and start stalking the person. Leave that person alone. Or if they've connected with someone else, you go on social media and you start stalking the person. Or you have, you're just compelled to make sure that this new person knows about the narcissist. I promise you this, they will figure it out. Trust me, there's only so long that you can play a game before the true self starts coming out. There's only so long. Your responsibility is not to inform the, uh, the uh, new source of supply. Leave that alone. Detach yourself. And do know you have to go through an emotional process of healing. Just like if you've ever experienced the loss of a loved one and you had to bury a loved one, there is a process. They're not coming back, you know. And even though the narcissist has the opportunity to come back and forth, that's because you keep the door open. You have to shut that door. You have to let them know there is no chance. Don't show any emotions. Do not have uh, great conversations with this individual. It all serves a purpose. They're predators, and they're looking for your weakness to see if there's still a door open. Shut that door and go through your emotional process. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully this has helped. You know, if you have any questions, you know, you're welcome to contact me at Dr. Carmen Bryant, D-R-C-A-R-M-E-N-B-R-Y-A-N-T at Outlook.com. Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the uh, bell that's next to it so that you can be uh, reminded whenever I post a new video. Um, I will soon go Periscope Live and I'll go and do reviews of the videos that I've posted on YouTube. So you're welcome to join me. You can ask me whatever question you want to, question and answer day. Uh, I will also go uh, live on Facebook for those of you that are on Facebook um, that I can't do both at the same time. I don't have enough devices to do it, you know, but you're welcome. I'm going to recap on Periscope a lot of things that I've talked about on YouTube and then I'll come live on Facebook and you can ask me questions, any kind of questions you have. Thank you so much for the comments. Thank you so much for those of you that are emailing me and telling me your story. You know, I commend you for your bravery. I commend you for your courage. You know, do know that a lot of us have been through the same thing that you've been through. You know, some of us have gotten beyond where you are. So, you know, we understand. When I say we, we're a community of women. A lot of us have been through domestic violence and especially narcissist abuse. And so some of us have gotten beyond, you know, where you are. But we're here to reach back and carry you and to encourage you, you know. Go to my uh, professional Facebook page, uh, Psychological Health Consultants and Services, and uh, like the page so that you can see whenever I upload. And once again, I really am appreciative. Thank you for those of you that have commented and saying that these videos are helping you. I am so honored and I am so thankful that you're listening. You know, And the first thing is to get knowledge in a place that you didn't have knowledge. First thing is to do is to get some understanding of what you're feeling, what you've been through, and that is not your fault. You're not crazy, and what you see and is not imagined. It is real. Thank you so much for joining me, and you guys have an awesome weekend.